Does pine pollen actually increase testosterone or is it just another supplement that will never really move the needle? Pine pollen is something that I have barely seen anyone talk about outside of health Twitter. It's the powdery pollen that's made by the male cones of pine trees. It's been used in traditional medicine for centuries as a nutraceutical and a tonic to promote things like longevity, virility and to treat various health problems. People take it today to support testosterone, fertility and prostate health as well as just for general health. It contains real mammalian hormones like testosterone, DHEA and progesterone but in really tiny amounts so can it actually boost testosterone? There's not a lot of scientific research on it just yet but we are going to dig into some of it today and find out whether pine pollen can be beneficial for men's health. And just before we start a quick medical disclaimer this is not medical advice this video is for informational purposes only and you should always check with your doctor before making changes to your health regimen. Pine pollen has been used for a very long time especially in East Asia. In traditional Chinese medicine has been used both as a food and a medicinal tonic. It was taken to strengthen the heart and lungs, to boost qi or life force, and even to prolong lifespan. It was also used for skin ailments. So for example, it's been used like a natural talcum powder to treat rashes, wounds, eczema, and bed sores. Outside of China, it's also been used by Native Americans. Let's find out what is inside pine pollen that has made it a staple in traditional medicine for so long. Pine pollen is about 15 to 20% protein. There are some kinds and a small amount of fats. About half of the pollen's mass is in a fibrous cell wall and when you crack the cell wall it releases the nutrients that are inside. So manufacturers often use cracked cell wall pollen uh, to prove digestibility and the bioavailability of the contents inside. It's got lots of vitamins and minerals like B vitamins, vitamin C, E, provitamin A, magnesium, calcium, potassium and so on. These are in like tiny amounts, nothing compared to actual food. So this isn't going to be a major source of micronutrients or or macronutrients and you should just focus on getting those from food rather than pollen. But pine pollen does have lots of polyphenols and flavonoids both of which are antioxidants. Quercetin, kempferol and naringenin are present. These scavenge free radicals and they reduce oxidative damage. In a lot of herbs or nutraceuticals, antioxidant properties are often thought to be one of the main drivers of any benefits that you see. And these three that I mentioned, quercetin, kempferol and naringenin, are also well-known aromatase inhibitors. So I have seen some people suggest that pine pollen could inhibit aromatase, which is going to be useful if you have excessively high estrogen. There are lots of other foods and herbs that can do the job just as well if not better though. Pine pollen contains sterols like beta cytosterol, camposterol, 24-methylene cholesterol and stigma sterol. I mentioned a couple of these in my recent video on black seed oil. If you've heard of pine pollen it's probably because it contains phytoandrogens, small amounts of actual mammalian hormones which is kind of crazy like testosterone, epitestosterone, androstenedione, DHEA and then some other hormones like estradiol, estriol and progesterone. On the measure of a few hundred micrograms per gram of pollen in some species and this is a very small amount and uh, most of these are going to be mostly inactive when you take pine pollen orally unfortunately but you can definitely see why people would be interested in this. I do want to make it clear that the amounts of these hormones in pine pollen are really minuscule and if it can boost testosterone it is actually probably not via these phytoandrogens and it's probably more due to the antioxidants or maybe aromatase inhibition rather than these like androgens themselves. Different species and preparation methods of pine pollen uh, will have pretty similar chemical makeups. There will be some differences. For example, the Pinus ponderosa, which grows in North America, has higher concentrations of certain nutrients and phytoandrogens than some Chinese pine species. Fresher pine pollen is also more potent. As it ages, the sterile and the brassina steroid content drops significantly. So getting it freshly harvested or at least well preserved is going to be best. So I've just told you what is in pine pollen. Let's talk about its potential effect on hormones and fertility in real life. Many people will tout pine pollen as a natural testosterone booster and it was used in traditional Chinese medicine for male issues like impotence or low energy. The rationale these days is that of course it contains substances that could influence androgens like testosterone and DHEA and we know from lab analyses that it does have measurable testosterone and other androgens but these are present in really really tiny amounts. So 10 grams of pine pollen contains about 0. 
0.8 micrograms of testosterone. To put that into perspective, the average male produces about 6 to 7 milligrams of testosterone every day, or 6,000 to 7,000 micrograms. So a huge uh, 10 gram dose of pine pollen has about 6,000 times less testosterone than what you make naturally in a day. There are some interesting animal studies though. Tilapia fish were given pine pollen and it turned 80% of them into males. The pine pollen fed fish also grew faster than normal. So pine pollen does have enough androgen-like compounds to influence development in vertebrates, at least in these fish, which are particularly sensitive to hormonal cues during development. But still, it is pretty unlikely that there's enough bioactive androgens for these to do much in humans. But there have been some studies in humans very recently. One small study of older men was conducted where these men were given one milliliter of pine pollen tincture. Their total testosterone levels increased a little bit from an average of 362 to 448 nanograms per deciliter. But this was just short of being statistically significant. So there is a trend towards higher testosterone, but the sample size was probably just too small for us to see any statistical significance. Maybe if they repeated this with a larger sample size, we would actually be able to see reliably whether this increased testosterone. The pine pollen did significantly improve their symptoms though. They had better libido, higher energy, better mood, and better erectile function with no serious side effects. And another small study of younger men with low testosterone symptoms uh, was conducted and this was pretty much the same as the previous study in terms of the study design. There was basically no change in testosterone for these guys though, these young guys. The average went from 499 to 488 nanograms per deciliter. That was not significant so there's basically no change. But there was a significant decrease in sex hormone binding globulin and higher free testosterone from 10.5 to 11 point seven nanograms per deciliter on average and their symptoms improved so they had better quality of life and better sexual function like libido and erectile function so there was a pretty clear subjective benefit for these young guys taking pine pollen the problem is these studies were not placebo controlled so it could have literally just been the placebo effect uh, of taking pine pollen <laughs> that caused these positive changes so maybe there's something there and uh, hopefully more larger scale studies will be done that are actually placebo controlled so we can rule out the effect of placebo there's just not many studies on this yet. Anecdotally, a lot of people do report uh, subjectively feeling better, more energetic, better libido and so on. Just not sure whether that's going to be reflected in their actual biomarkers. But if it makes you feel better, more powerful, more energetic, then you might as well keep taking it. If it's genuinely improving your life like that, then it doesn't really matter if your biomarkers aren't moving. That's still a good thing. Personally, I don't think I really noticed any difference from taking it uh, myself. I was already feeling pretty good when I was taking pine pollen. So I don't know how much of a difference it was really going to make. In my opinion, you're going to be better off focusing on the really big levers like getting to a healthy body fat, getting sufficient micronutrients, sleeping well, being active and lowering chronic stress and all these things are going to have a bigger impact on testosterone and quality of life than pine pollen in my opinion. Generally, pine pollen is a pretty safe supplement when it's used properly. Some people do get things like bloating or soft stools at first. Definitely start with a low dose and you should be fine. The main concern of course is an allergic reaction. Pine pollen is less allergenic compared to other pollens but it can cause symptoms in sensitive people like sneezing, runny nose, itchy eyes and more rarely skin hives or worsening of asthma. Interestingly ingesting pollen might not provoke the same reaction as inhaling it but of course please do be careful especially if you have allergies. If you really want to try pine pollen um, first of all speak to your doctor and then do a very small testing dose and see whether you get any symptoms over the next like 24 hours. Avoid it if you're pregnant or breastfeeding and don't give it to children because there's just no safety research on these populations yet. There is some concern that the pine pollen could contain environmental toxins if it's harvested from polluted areas like heavy metals. Some could also contain mold and mycotoxins so you have to get your pine pollen from a good source like USP or NSF certified. The safe dose of pine pollen is pretty high so you would have to be taking a lot of it for a long time to start seeing toxicity. As long as you're not taking like five grams a day for months months or years, you're probably going to be fine. Just be reasonable, use a moderate dose. So some practical advice for you if you do want to try pine pollen. The main forms are powder that can be eaten or mixed into foods. You can get capsules or tablets that contain the powder and these are good if you don't like the taste of the powder. You can get tinctures which are liquid extracts where the pine pollen is extracted in a mixture of alcohol and water and then you take a few drops of that under the tongue or in a drink. You can also get topical preparations for skin conditions. For general health or skin health, the the powder or the capsules
are pretty great. You can put the powder into a yogurt or oatmeal or a smoothie. I used to put mine in a smoothie. Tinctures are often considered the best for hormonal health because they can concentrate the steroids and the under tongue absorption bypasses the digestion, potentially delivering the phytoandrogens more directly. But these extracts can contain 50% alcohol, so that might be a bit strong for many people, especially if you're avoiding alcohol. A good dose of pine pollen is something like 250 to 1000 milligrams per day. So like 500 milligrams is a pretty good middle ground. That's about half a teaspoon of powder. And that is what I used to take when I was having pine pollen daily. And if you have got the tincture version, the extract that is one full dropper, you don't need to mega dose this. There's always some people who think that they can mega dose and get like 10 times the normal result. More is not always better and you're probably just wasting the product. And pine pollen is expensive enough as it is. It can be taken at any time of day really, but I have heard that right before bed or first thing in the morning is good. As with most other supplements, you should probably cycle pine pollen. So you could do like five days on, two days off, or three or four weeks on, one week off. And this is meant to prevent the body from adapting or getting desensitized to the pollen. This is what they did in the human testosterone studies I mentioned earlier. Five days on, two days off. Make sure the pine pollen you get says cell wall broken to improve the digestibility and also get it wild harvested from clean areas for the highest quality and the lowest risk of contaminants. And once you have it, store it in a cool, dry place away from direct sunlight. And it's best to use it within one year of harvest. Like, as I said earlier, the quality gets worse over time. So pine pollen does have some promise. I'm not going to tell you it's a miraculous, super androgenic supplement. And we do have those small scale human studies, but not really anything that you can call super convincing. So there really needs to be much more research. Hopefully with enough interest in a supplement, the research will get done. Uh, those two human testosterone studies on pine pollen were done in 2024 and 2025 so people are thinking about it it's definitely interesting that pine pollen has real bioactive mammalian androgens in it that is a very strange situation but if you want to boost your testosterone or fertility or build muscle it is always going to come back to getting the basics locked in like good sleep exercise a nutrient dense diet healthy body composition good light environment low stress things like that supplements are mostly just things that can potentially give you a few extra percentage points of a boost everyone wants to find Find the miracle supplement that will solve all of their problems but while you're looking for that make sure that you at least have all of these other things on point and you probably won't even need many supplements anyway pine pollen is very expensive and if you're looking for like results per dollar this is not one that i would really recommend higher impact supplements at least for muscle growth are going to be things like creatine uh, whey caffeine i have a whole section in my testosterone optimization guide about testosterone boosting supplements spoiler alert most of them don't work even though they're marketed as test boosters, but there are a few that do actually move the needle. My testosterone guide breaks down which supplements have real human data behind them and which are just a waste of money. Check out that guide in the description if you want to find out what those supplements are. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you've heard of pine pollen before, any other uses you know about, or your experience with it, and I will see you next time.